Today I'm gonna to show you how to build your own grill pit to roast a whole pig in your own backyard. I'm gonna do this in my uh, driveway behind my house here in Chicago. Just about anybody can do it. It's super easy. And I'm gonna show you how to build it, how to roast the pig, how to take it off, and serve about 60 or so people. It's super easy and actually very cheap to do when you wanna serve 60 people. Here's what you'll need to build your pit. 48 cinder blocks, four eight foot pieces of steel rebar, eight four foot pieces of rebar, a bag of rebar ties, a roll of industrial width and aluminum foil, two 20 pound bags of lump charcoal, eight to 10 heavy rocks or bricks for holding down the foil. Except for the foil, you can get all of these items at Home Depot. Make sure you position your grill on a flat level surface they can't be scorched by heat. If you build this on grass, you'll make burn marks and you run the risk of setting the grass on fire. Spread aluminum foil across the bottom and lower sides of the pit. It reflects heat up, making your pit more effective, but also catches any grease that falls from the roasting pig. When you're done with everything, just gather up the foil to clean up the mess. Flatten it down, pull it over the edge. That's great. Right there, that's the hardest part. <laughs> Putting all the bricks together. Took me maybe about half an hour. Uh, and now that it's done, I'm gonna let it be for the night. Well, first I'll put together the rebar. Generally, before I put everything together, I give the steel wool a once over with some water and steel wool. Just wanna make sure I get any rust or filings that might be on there. These are going to be in a lot of fire, so it's hard to imagine that there's going to be much in the way of pathogens that are going to get to the food, but it's good to just do some sort of a once over before you start. All right, now that I'm done washing these, a quick word on why I use rebar. This is basically the cheapest steel thing that I could get that's not galvanized. Galvanized, if it catches fire and it's on your food, it's gonna poison your food and you're gonna die and that'll be terrible. Uh, but uh, stainless steel would be great, but stainless steel in this quantity is very expensive. So I use rebar, it's cheap and it works really well. And this is the basic setup of the grill. I have two eight foot, half inch uh, pieces of rebar and then I have four four foot half inch pieces of rebar and I just lay them down one two three four and set it up like this then I get pieces of uh, rebar tie and put them together So I laid down another set of rebar on top of the other one and I'm just going to tie these together, not to the other set, but I'm going to tie these together uh, just like I did with the other one and then we'll have a top layer and a bottom layer. The pig will rest on the bottom layer and we'll put another layer on top of the pig and when it comes time to flip them, they'll all just go right together. So I've got everything ready for tomorrow. Uh, it's probably gonna storm tonight. And uh, that'll be interesting. I've never had to deal with that before. But everything should be okay. If, uh, if it does storm, we'll just get some cloths and damp it all down. Nothing should be hurt. I'm getting a little rain now. So, see you in the morning. Hey, good morning. So I realized late last night that actually I had missed a row of bricks. So it's actually four bricks up and I've got my uh, rebar grill set up here. And then also uh, I use some towels in order to uh, clean up the inside because it stormed last night, it rained. And then I've got some other rebar and set on a table. And uh, this is where I'm gonna put the pig when I start cooking it or when I bring it back from the store. I'm just gonna lay it out here. 
uh, attach it to the rebar and then throw it on the grill ready to go. This is my local grocery store. I ordered my pig a few days in advance. The night before pickup, I visited the store to check out the pig and to salt it. Then they let me keep it in their freezer overnight. I've already paid, so now I'm going to the loading door to pick up the pig. Okay. There it is. <laughs> Sorry, man. That's all right. That's why it's in a bag. It's heavy, it's heavy. All right. You got it? All right, there it is. Thank you very much, man. No problem, buddy. Anytime. Have Thank a good you. one. Okay, with absolutely no ceremony whatsoever, we got the pig, and I'm gonna take this thing uh, back to the house, and we're gonna set it up on the grill and get it going. So last night I went to the grocery store and I picked up the pig. Actually, they let me keep it in the refrigerator. I uh, asked them to split it down the middle so that it will splay a little better. And then I salted the whole thing. It's 76 pounds. Uh, you should generally get about a pound and a half per person that you're gonna have. We're gonna have about 55 or so people, uh, a lot of kids, so they won't eat quite as much. Uh, and I don't really do anything to it. I don't inject it with anything. I don't use any special sauces. I just cook it straight as is, and uh, it works really well. You got it? Nope, one more. There we go. Okay, now that we got the pig all set up, we're gonna start the fire and then put it on. Should be pretty easy. So I just use regular lump charcoal. I usually go through about two bags of them. And the key is to not use too much. You want to put a little bit on each end uh, and you want it to burn low and slow for a long time. Okay, now that we've got it over the fire, I put a little, foil, a little bit of foil over the head, and I'm going to cover the whole thing with foil. We're going to cook it for about eight hours. Right now it's uh, 9.30. took a little while to get it on. Uh, you start it with skin side down. You want to make sure that it's low and slow. It's not very hot. Uh, and it's just gonna go for a long time. In about four hours or so, around 1.30, I'm gonna get some help and we're gonna flip the pig. First the foil. How do you know how long to cook? Basically, you're looking to get the meat to about 145 degrees and then keep it there for two to three hours. It might take you at least four hours just to get to the roasting temperature. Figuring out the amount of charcoal and heat is more of an art than a science. So I can't help you there, but if you can roast it for 10 hours rather than eight, you won't overcook it, you'll get moister, more shreddable meat. And there you go. I'm gonna let this cook for about uh, four hours, then I'm gonna flip it. We've been cooking for about four and a half hours now, and my friend Fred has shown up in order to really mess with things. Uh, we're gonna take off the foil, and then we're gonna flip this thing, all right? so. been cooking a lot on the other side 
there's not a whole lot of cooking that's been done on this side. Now we're going to flip it and it's going to start cooking from the inside and it'll cook a lot faster than it does on the side with the skin because the skin acts as an insulation. All right, so it's 2.10, I'm gonna let it go for another four hours and then uh, everything should be good. Seventy-six pounds. Wow. That's like three of you. Okay. Okay.